Hello everyone and welcome to another Tilly Talks by Paul Isley. That's me. We have today some really nice special plants to talk about and some hybridization to talk about. We'll start out with this plant. This was shown, I don't know, a year or two ago coming into bloom. This is a, a sample of Bulbosa gigante, which is a much larger form of Bulbosa. It bloomed, the inflorescence has uh, been removed, and now you can see it has a number of offsets coming up. This is typical of what Tillandsias do. They grow to maturity, whether from seed or from offset. They bloom, and then they put out offsets after that. They grow up and they keep doing that generation after generation. And then eventually you end up with a clump, like this incredible clump of heteromorpha here that's been growing for many, many years little bit of Spanish moss on it. This giant clump of uh, Ionantha off here to the, well, your right, my left. Uh, you can see that that's uh, turned into a giant ball over the years. Of course, it's not really on itself like most of the clumps are. This was glued onto screens and, um, and the plants grew in over two or three years. But the idea is there, that's what they do. They start with one plant and over time they turn into a large clump. Another plant that's really special and very rare. Check this out. This is Tillandsia chapawensis. And I wish we had a lot of these. There's a lot of demand for it. It's an expensive plant because it's so rare. But look how beautiful that is. Fan-shaped and delicate looking. And it, it's hardy, but like Gardneri, which, with which it is allied taxonomically, it doesn't like real cold weather and it doesn't like to be wet for too long and it doesn't like real dry hot weather for very long either but medium conditions it thrives and uh, this one Chapuensis grows to be very large about the size of a basketball and another one that's really cool is over here on your left Tillandsia somnians and somnians is viviparous, which is a botanical term that means that it produces offsets on the inflorescence. So you have the original, let me see if I can get this guy off of here and get him up in the air a little bit more. But the original plant that produced this plant is gone. The mother plant is gone. You can see it says Tillandsia somnians here. So this was the first offset and it grew and it is now itself producing a very tall, thin inflorescence that you can see here. And it will be producing offsets on that inflorescence shortly. Meanwhile, on the original inflorescence, you can see this one grew up, this one's growing up, this one's growing up, and now this one also is going to flower and send up a tall flower spike. So Tillandsia somnians is very special. Not super expensive. Uh, we sell offsets. This is an offset here of Tillandsia somnians, and this is typical for the size that uh, that we have. Beautiful plant, purple soft leaves. It's a mesic species, which means it's a more wet growing or a more moist growing species. So you don't want to grow this one outside of Tucson outside. Um, it likes a more humid environment, a little bit on the cooler side, but it's still, like all Tillandsias, it will take a broad range of conditions and almost anything for a short period of time. But if you have medium conditions, medium light, medium humidity and all that, this one uh, does really, really well. Now, I'm going to show you three hybrids that all have Tillandsia rothii in them, just to give you an idea of the variation that you can have with Tillandsia rothii. This one is called Tillandsia avatar nuevo, and this one is uh, at least it's, I forget which one comes first. Let me think for one second here, because I've also got this guy, which is awesome amber. This is Rothii by Concolor, I think. <laughs> it's so hard to remember all these hybrids. And this one's Jalisco monocola with Rothii. So you can see there's a similarity, but they are different. And then another one is Tillandsia best in class. 
and best in class is Xerographica in Rothii. And this one's blooming on the small side. Many of these will get to be very large, even well over two feet, two and a half feet in diameter. But when you grow the plants like this, uh, and you have a seed badge that comes up, eventually some of them will start blooming. Most of them won't. Those that don't will grow for another year, and then some of those will bloom. And probably most of them won't. And then they go for another year. And so those that go for several years and don't bloom, of course, will be larger when they do bloom. So for collectors, there's a positive either way you look at it. If it blooms, it's gorgeous, it turns lots of color, and that's wonderful, so yay. But if it doesn't bloom, it'll grow for a whole other year and get bigger, which a lot of people like as well. So either way, you kind of win. So this is a, a best in class of Zero Graphica by Rothii, like I said. The reverse of this, which is Rothii by Zero Graphica, is called upper class. I don't have one here in front of me or blooming right now, but you have best in class, which has the Zero Graphica as the seed parent, as the mother plant. You have upper class that has Rothii as the seed parent, as the mother plant. So there you go. Um, I'd shown you a little bit earlier this wonderful clump of Tillandsia heteromorpha and this is a piece of uh, Usneoides el mejor which is Spanish moss. El mejor is Spanish for the best. It's a very thick bright white form of Spanish moss. This is just a little teeny clump that somehow lodged itself here in the leaves of this spectacular clump of Tillandsia heteromorpha. And this has been growing, we've probably had this growing for 30 years. You can see the, the ancestral stem here on these different plants. And uh, you can see that they're quite large for a heteromorpha. They generally don't get this large, but if you give them enough time, they will get large. It's similar to a tectorum, the, the trichomes, the white fuzz on the leaves is nowhere near, they're nowhere near as large. And the shape is, uh, is fairly similar, but most tectorums are not coalescent. Coalescent means growing along a stem. And as you can see, there are very long stems here for this heteromorpha. So it's, uh, it's not very common, but it's a great plant. And, oh, let me talk about for a second about the, uh, the new genus Tillandsia booklet. Um, I could be a little bit pejorative and say for those of you who read, but I know everybody reads, right? This is a great little booklet for learning about the plants and learning about how they grow, why they grow, where they are, how you use them, how to mount them, how to take care of them indoors, how to take care of them outdoors. Uh, it's, it's a great inexpensive way to become much more familiar with these air plants that everybody loves so much. Then, of course, I'll put him in here. There's the big book. I think I've shown this a few times. For people who really want to learn a lot about Tillandsia, I think this is the best way to do it. This one um, is over 300 pages. I can open it up. Well, it just happened to open up to Tillandsia Xerographica. So here's the format for most of the species. It has the name, who described it, in what year, Rowater in 1953, how to pronounce the name Xerographica, Xerographica, the subgenus it's in, which is Tillandsia. There are about seven different subgenera, six or seven different subgenera of Tillandsia. And then the etymology of the word, where the name comes from. Xerographic is a combination of the Greek adjective uh, xeros, which means dry, and the noun graphikos, which means painting. The epithet, the name, is a reference to the inflorescence that appears as if colored with pastel chalks. So each species has, has its own uh, introduction like that. And then it talks about the plants, where they come from, and how they grow, what the inflorescences are like, and all of that. Uh, some of them have two pages, like Latifolia. Most of them have two pages. Latifolia has four pages, because there are many varieties of Latifolia. This is the Peruvian coastal desert. Uh, you can see that they're viviparous, this form. It has new plants growing out of the flower spike. That's pretty cool. 
Um, of course, I open it up to zero graphic again. Reichenbachy is another one. This one has fragrant flowers. It was named in 1889 by J.G. Baker. So anyway, it's a great way to learn about the plants. And then there are many, many pages with the, uh, the hybrids and the different uh, other Tillandsias that are, that are here in the book. And then there's some pages with photographs of Neurogelias and Cryptanthus, different genera. And then this is a chapter on botanical nomenclature and pronunciation. If you're interested in how to say the names of the plants, how about that? And the uh, botanical uh, taxonomy of the plants. How are they related to each other? How do Tillandsias fit into the bromeliad family? How does the bromeliad family fit into the plant kingdom? So it talks about all that, and it talks about hybridization, and what Grexes are, and what F1s and F2s and cultivars. Here's the pronunciation guide, so how to pronounce the plants. So anyway, there's all this stuff, and then the last chapter in this book is the evolution and biology of the plants, and that, that took a year to do that. That wasn't so easy. There's a picture at the nursery here. But this explains, of all the plants on Earth, how did Tillandsias grow without any dirt? How does that happen? And also, of all the plants on Earth, they vary in shape, color, and size from species to species more than any other plant. How does that happen? So that's what this chapter at the end here uh, talks about and answers, besides having pictures. And then at the uh, very end here, he talked about the trichomes, the white fuzz on the leaves, the specialized use that Tillandsias have evolved for those, for those little appendages that uh, are so attractive for people. And then there's a color chart so that when you get a color for one of the flowers or something, you know what that color actually looks like. And then there's a glossary for all the botanical terms so that you can see what, what the words mean. You know, it's, when you talk about plants, you would expect that there, are some, there is some jargon, some terminology for the plants. Uh, you know, nobody learns about medicine without learning medical words, right? Or law without law words, accounting without accounting words, engineering without engineering words. So with the plants, there are also words. Fortunately, there's a glossary so you can see what the words mean. Pretty soon you can become an expert. How about that? Okay, so that's enough of that. And... Our website is rainforestflora.com. Uh, we're on Instagram. There's a lot of great stuff on Instagram. If you'd like to follow us, we'd love to have you follow us. And uh, that's it for today. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Forest Flora Incorporated.